Hi there, my name is David Williams. I'm from Okanagan College and I want to talk to you today about amplifiers. And uh, what I'm going to do is sort of give it a general overview of what amplifiers do and then talk about one of the main characteristics of amplifiers that we are usually concerned about and that's the amplifier gain. Now we got a few pictures here of some amplifiers. We got an internal circuitry, a printed circuit board of an amplifier. We got a tube amplifier over here. We got an enclosed, probably a guitar amp. And this last picture here is a circuit diagram of an amplifier. Now, in general, amplifier is a device that boosts the current voltage and or power of a signal. And I've got a cartoon drawing here of, a, of an amplifier represented by this triangle, where we have a signal coming into the amplifier. And here I've got the sin sinusoidal wave coming into the, to the amplifier here and you can see that the signal coming out of the amplifier is a bigger signal in some manner, um, sort of re representing a, a larger voltage, the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is larger. So if the we, we've got a, a voltage gain, we could also have a gain of the current, we could also have a gain of the, the signal power. Now if the power out of this, of the power of the output signal is bigger than the power of the input signal, does it mean that it violates the second law of thermodynamics, i.e. we've created energy? And, and of course we haven't, and, and where that extra energy comes from is the, the power supply for this amplifier is putting energy into the signal, and that's, that's where that extra energy of the output signal is coming from. So now here's another question. Is a step-up transformer or a boost regulator an amplifier? That's where we have some kind of input voltage, and the output voltage is a higher voltage. And the answer to that is no, it's not an amplifier because it doesn't amplify the it doesn't amplify the power in any manner. What you should have in, in an ideal transformer or boost regulator is the power in is going to be equal to the power out. So that means if you're stepping up the voltage, you're going to have to step down the current. Now here we got a, a similar sort of picture in, in the previous diagram, in the previous slide. We've got our amplifier here, the triangle shape. We've got an input signal coming in and an output signal coming out. And so this, this input signal is going to be, we're, we're representing it as a sinusoidal wave. It's got some amount of peak voltage. And it also is being applied to some kind of load, so it's also got some amount of input current, some, kind of, some amount of current. And so the power of this input signal is going to be the, the voltage, the, the input voltage times the input current. And at the output, we're going to have some kind of some amount of output current going going through a load. We'll have some amount of output voltage, and the output power is going to be equal to the output voltage times the output current. So if we look at each one of these characteristics, power, voltage, and current individually, at both the input and the output, we can have, see that we've got three different types of gain. We've got voltage gain, so that's where we look at the output power, out, sorry, output voltage, and divided by the input voltage. That ratio is equal to the voltage gain, which we designate with the capital letter A and a subscript V. Current gain is the ratio of the output current over the input current. And that gives us a unitless ratio that we're designating with a capital A for gain with a subscript I for current, so current gain. And similarly, power gain, what is the output power and what is the input power? Divide those two numbers that gives us a unitless number that's our power gain designated here by the capital A in the lowercase p. So here's a, here's a few examples using using the equations that we have in the previous slide we want to fill in the blanks here. So if we have an input voltage of 1 going into an amplifier with a voltage gain of 10 the output voltage is going to be equal to AV times V in. So 10 gain times 1 volt gives us 10 volts at the output. Now in this example, if we've got an input power, the signal power is 2 watts coming into the amplifier. The amplifier has a gain of 5. We're going to have the output power is going to be equal to the power gain times the input power. So that's going to be 5 gain times 2 watts gives us 10 watts at the output. Now if we have an output power of 10 watts and an input power of 0.1 watt, the power, the power gain is going to be 10 watts 
over 0.1 watt equals 100 and there's no units for the for the gain um, uh, so I've done the first three here for you and I'll let you carry on and and figure out the, the last four as as an example as examples and um, just simply using the equations from the previous slide to figure out to fill in the blank for the for, the, for these questions Okay, so on, the, on this slide, what, what I'm showing is characteristics of an amplifier. And it's an adjustable amplifier. And we're going to continue, we're going to maintain the same input power. And for each one of these volume settings, I'm going to have some amount of output power. And then if I know my output power and my input power, I can calculate the gain. So volume setting one, the gain is one, so the power, input power and the output power are equal to each other. I step the volume setting up by, by one, and that actually increases the gain to 10. So my ratio of output power to input power is, is a 10. And I keep set, every time I step up the volume setting, I'm actually increasing the gain by a factor of 10. So now if I was to go and plot the gain as a function of the volume setting, so in other words, put the volume on the x-axis and the gain on the y-axis. I'm going to have a hard time plotting this. My volume settings are on the x-axis 1 to, 1 to 12, but then my gain settings at, at 1, I'm going to have a value of 1, but at 12, I'm going to have a value of, what's that, 100,000 million, I'm going to have a value of 100 billion. So how do I plot on the same graph something that ranges from 1 to 100 billion? without losing any any amount of, of resolution trying to plot such big numbers. Well this was a, a a problem that needs to be this is a problem that needs to be solved for sure. And the way that we do that is we don't plot this thing out linear linearly, we plot it out exponentially. And we use something called the decibel, which is based on something called the bell. So the the bell and the decibel are units for expressing values logarithmically. So if, you, if we go back to, to these gains, we've got numbers from 1 up to 100 billion. And if we take the log of each one of those numbers, that's going to give us the number in bells. So if our number, if we have a gain of 1, the log of 1 is 0. So a gain of 1 is the same as having a gain of 0 bells. Or if we have a gain of 1,000, a ratio gain of a thousand, if we take the log of a thousand, that's equal to three. So that gives us three bells. So a gain of a thousand as a ratio is equal to a gain of three bells. Now this is this is fine. We could use these units of bells, but what what um what's been found is that the unit of bell itself is too big. So we actually want to break it down, break it into into smaller chunks. And so what the is typically used when measuring gain, we either use the ratio or we use decibels. So a decibel is equal to one-tenth of a bell. So if you have one bell, that's equal to 10 decibels. So here, if we have one Alexander Graham bell, it's the same as having 10 Alexander Graham decibels. That's my best joke, so I hope you laughed. Um, anyway, decibels and uh, bells and decibels, and more specifically, but decibels are a very handy way of measuring gain because it allows us to deal with unwieldy large numbers like 100 billion at the same time as we deal with with small numbers of gain like a gain of one so here's some here's some examples and I'll, I'll do a few of these examples of converting from ratios into decibels so remember these these are will be the same they're representing the same amount of gain just in a, in a different form so gain of 10 in ratio, we plug number 10 into our conversion here, 10 log 10. Log of 10 is 1, so a gain of 10 as a ratio is actually the same as 10 decibels. If we have a gain of ratio of a half, so that means our, actual, our output is actually half the size of our input, plug in the half into this equation, 10 log of a half is equal to negative 3 decibels. 
Um, I'm going to skip down to this one of a gain of a 10,000 as a ratio. We plug that ratio number into here, 10 log of 10,000. Log of 10,000 is equal to 4 times 10 gives us 40 dB. Okay, I'll, I'll let you fill in the other two numbers. Now going over here, going the other way from decibels to back to ratios. So if we've got a gain of 10 dB, we want to figure out what the gain as a ratio is. Well, we can plug it into this equation. Um, 10 dB over 10 is 1. 10 to the first power is 10. Well, I mean, that's the same as we just did over here. Uh, what about minus 3 dB? Well, we're going to put minus... Well, it's actually the same as I did there, too. That's silly of me. Anyway, minus 3 dB. We take this minus 3 number in, in plug it into this equation here. Minus 3 over 10 is negative 0.3. 10 to the negative 0.3 is equal to about 1 half. Um, I'm going to skip down the bottom one and let you do these, these two middle ones. We've got a ratio. We want to figure out the ratio gain when our gain is 6 dB. So if we have 6 dB, we plug 6 into this number, into this equation. 6 over 10 is 0.6. 10 to the 0.6 is equal to about 4. So a gain of 4 is the same as having a gain of 6 dB. They mean the same thing. They're just different ways of expressing that gain. Now I'm going to finish off just giving you a list here of some, some amplifier terms that are important to understand without going into the definitions of them. I just want you to see these terms and then hopefully curiosity will entice you into investigating what each one of these terms mean. Alright, I hope you learned something about amplifiers and I will continue um, amplifier tutorials in the near future.